We'd like to start out by thanking our valuable sponsors. Sense of Satisfaction by Cricut is the place for all your fragrance needs. Plus, she's got products to heal what ails your skin and your hair. Shop at sensebycricket.com. Special thanks to our valued sponsor, John Travis, a financial coach and certified kingdom advisor with Richard Young Associates, a registered investment advisor. Thanks goes to Anna Patterson, my sister in the Lord who faithfully gives to this ministry every month. And to our newest sponsor, LaToya Gerard of Preach the Word Worldwide Network. She is a valued sponsor and a major encourager regarding this ministry. We need and would love to have you as a sponsor. Absolutely no gift is too small. Please note the info regarding giving throughout and at the end of the show and help us spread these testimonies around the world. Please note that the views and opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily the viewpoints of our sponsor. It's time to hear the story, make the connection, learn the lesson, and gain the wisdom. Are you ready? Let's get charged and be changed. The Sister Speak Brother Break Show. Conversations on grace, healing, and deliverance. This is Marcy Bush. Come on, let's journey together. Whatever like that, I got to make it work. Mm -hmm. Like they say, I got to roll up Peter to pay Paul. Right. Right. So I have to make some tough decisions, mm -hmm. you know. It was one time when Carlos was in college and he couldn't stay in the dorm, so he had to have an apartment. Mm -hmm. So that meant who got to pay for that apartment? Mm -hmm. So I had to make a decision whether I was going to continue to pay my car note or help my child. So I let that car go back. Mm -hmm. So that's when I had to trust God. Right. Right. Because he was all I had mm -hmm. to depend mm -hmm. on. Yep, yep. And I and even you know there are a lot of uh, children of single parents who don't get. There are some adults that I believe don't get the sacrifice. Yeah, you know that comes along with it. And like you're not holding it over anybody's head or anything. Right. But it's a sacrifice. It is. And it is a mental, I mean, it is an exercise of mental strength. Yeah. My kids used to always, always say, used to always say when they were younger, I want a Mercedes. You know, they're like, Mama, get you one. I say, right now, y'all my Mercedes. <laughs> okay. You know, <laughs> so right. um, th there are a lot of times, like mm -hmm. you said, it is a sacrifice. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to make those decisions. I remember, you know, Bishop sharing with us that sometimes he didn't eat. He went to bed hungry right, so he, right, his kids could right, have enough. Right. That's yes. just what you have to, you know, yes. have to do sometimes. Yes. And they don't know. No. And sometimes they feel like, great day, mama. You, you know what I'm saying? Because they don't. Right. They don't know. And it, they, it, it, they don't have to. They don't. But sometimes, you <laughs> sometimes, you know, you get all riled up and they're like, it is not that serious. <laughs> right. I'm thinking, you don't know what I exactly. sacrificed. Exactly. You know, or when they're acting like they're not appreciative. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, but hey. Mm -hmm. You have to you do, do what, what you have, have to do. do. Yeah. So as as your kids started to mature and go you know to college and go their own way how what how were you changing because i know i let me let me back up a little bit because i was asking about too when you when you first moved did you feel like oh yeah this is it and you said no that's when your trust was being established mm -hmm. um and yeah, your trust is always established when you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. When you, as as pastor, our pastor would say, when you don't have that footing. Right. When you cannot feel like, oh, right. I don't know what's happening. That's when that trust, that faith is being established. Um, what other areas besides financial can you say that your faith and trust 
was being established and cemented during that time? I think the uh, biggest thing for me too was the kids. You know, I my kids came to New Beginning Young, fortunately mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. So they've always gotten a word, good foundation. But you know, there are times when it don't look like <laughs> right. they remember anything right. you that they've been taught, right. you know. Uh -huh. But so trying to make sure, and I've always been the kind that I don't ever want to enable my kids. Mm -hmm. I want them to sometime figure it out. Mm -hmm. So that ch is a challenge as a single parent, knowing when to make them figure it out. Mm -hmm. So you won't be an enabler. Right, right. And really being there for them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm sure that they didn't view it as mama was always there for me because right. I was in this, you got to figure this out. Yes. I, my kids know and they know I still tell them to this day, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know. So as, as a parent trying to make sure you raise spiritually sound, not just spiritually sound, but good people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying to and do that with three people, right. trying to help make them and, and mold them. And all of them have their own personalities. Own personalities. Mm -hmm. And my oldest, he'll tell you to this day, I, oh, my favorite, I used to always tell him, you can't do what everybody else can do. Right. And get away with it. Right. Because you got a calling on your mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And he remembers that to this mm -hmm. day. But that was one of the things that trusting God to give me the ability to raise them mm -hmm. into the purpose right. he put them here for. Right. Right. Yes. I heard um, there was a, a pastor I heard the other day. I had a. A funeral of, of a loved one and he was talking about that train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old he will not depart from it he said and I've often said it in a different way but he said when he's old he won't depart I always said it ain't said nothing about the meantime <laughs> right like train the child when he's old it's like he knows what to come back to hold on to right and won't depart right but right in there right in the middle oh yeah <laughs> It gets rocky, and that's when you truly got to be like, okay, God, I trust you. Yes. When I can't trust what they're doing, yeah. when I can't trust what it's looking like. Exactly. When I, I'm going to trust you. I know you love them more than I do. That's right. I know you got, and, oh, but staying out of it. <laughs> but yeah. you know what? Probably, even though, again, it didn't feel good, your mama sh showed you how to do that. Yeah. How to not be an enabler. Right. How to, how to, you know, be there, but you got to work this. Yeah. And you got to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I, like I said, I'm sure it did not feel good, but that's probably a lesson you didn't even know was embedded didn't, in you. Didn't know it. That showed up when it needed to show exactly. up. Exactly. And, they, and they're always better for it. Yeah. Uh, again, it might not look good. It might not, but in the end, it's going to work. Yes. It's going to work just like it worked for you, just like that was some of that route that got you to receiving from your mother-in-law and yeah. all of that good stuff. Yeah. So the same in, in your children. So what what are some of the other areas? Because I know that's a big gap from five from Carlos, like being five to being 15, you know, and there was a lot going on in there. But what are some of the other things through, you know, the other turns throughout that? Um, how old were you when your mom passed away? Um, my mom passed away in 2008. Okay. So. Now, so let me say this, because when I knew when I knew your mom, she was in a wheelchair at Correct. that point. What are some of the as she went through? health challenges or whatever, what did that look like and feel like for you? Um, I think, of course, it was fearful, fear, because you don't know how she's going to deal with it, how everybody's going to deal with it. There's a lot of unknowns for that, you know, um, but 
Now, was she diabetic? She or? was. Mom, yeah, she was diabetic, and um, she had also had a um, open heart surgery. Okay. Um, but through that, my mom lived, I think, ten years without legs. Okay. Never heard a complaint about it. Okay. If anything taught me how you live with adversity. Okay. You know what the verse that says, whatever state I'm in. Yeah, yeah. I've learned there what to be content. Yes. Yes. Okay. If anything, I saw, like I said, mama was always a silent person, but I always saw the strength. Mm -hmm. The strength that we, I remember one time a doctor saying to her, most people, when they have both legs amputated, they give up. Because a lot of people, you know, don't want to live like that. Right. Right. But she was not one of those people. She still went to church. She still, you know, she mm -hmm. was, she was set in her way. So it was certain ones of us she wanted to do, okay. as Winnie will tell you, because mm -hmm. Winnie lived with her for, right. you know, certain things she just wanted certain people to do for her. Mm -hmm. But she still lived her life, yes. you know, even during all that. Yes. And now were y'all still, that's when you were, um, did y'all, were y'all doing family dinners then? That's what started the family dinners. Okay. When okay. when Mama's health started to decline, we all okay. started to come together okay. to eat with her. Okay, gotcha. And then after she passed, it just... All right, so Vivian, I am glad we made it back to the couch. Um, last time we had to wrap up the last session, but now we're back here again together. And so we're going to continue this journey with you. So... Um, you and the kids were out. You're on your own. Y'all, you've, you've talked about like starting, putting your kids into college and all this stuff and seeing what God has done in your life that at one point you maybe didn't know was possible. You know, you got your own place. You, you have somebody in college and then, you know, you got two more children who I'm sure they started going their ways, but at this point, thinking about the 16-year-old girl versus the one with three kids in your own place, and it's happening, things are going, how did you see yourself stronger or different, or just what did that part of your life look like? Yeah, I think at that point, as I had made it through so many obstacles and challenges in my life and seeing how God had strengthened me, not even knowing how much, mm -hmm. honestly, he had strengthened me mm -hmm. and just knowing you had people depending on you. Mm -hmm. um, that because of the decisions that I make right. was going to determine right. their choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were looking at me. Yes. It, at that time, I was pretty much their only parent, pretty mm -hmm. much serving as their only parent okay. in their lives. And so everything I did, everything they needed mm -hmm. fell on my shoulders. Okay. And so during that time in my life, I can remember so vividly having to trust God in so many different situations, mm -hmm. even for all the way down to gas money okay. in my car. Okay. I remember one situation so vivid that um, I'm driving in the car almost on E and I'm hearing the Holy Spirit saying, are you going to trust me mm. or are you going to trust me? Mm. And mm. I said, I trust you, God. Yes. I don't have a choice but to trust you. Yes. Because I knew, you know, it was me and him, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, if he didn't have me, if he didn't provide for me right. and my children, who else? There was no one else to provide. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I saw my trust in God develop so strong during that time. Okay. My kids would come to me and say, mom, I need this. Mm -hmm. Mom, I need that. And I would just say, we'll see. Okay. And just have to trust God to figure okay. it out. During the time when they would come to me, I had no idea how I was going to get it right. most of the time. Right. 
but he never failed us. Yes. They got yes. what they needed and what they, most of the time what they wanted because mm -hmm. most of the time it wasn't a need. <laughs> right. You know how kids are. Right. Most of the time it's a want anyway. Mm -hmm. But you want your kids to be okay. Yes. My kids yes. have been through so much, mm -hmm. you know, so I wanted them to have so much, a, a level of normalcy in their lives right. and not see, you know, how this affected them. Mm -hmm. You know, of course it affected them because like I said before, they were pulled into circumstances and situations and saw and heard things they shouldn't yeah. have never seen nor right. heard or be have been a part of. Right. So once I got them out of that situation, mm -hmm. I wanted their lives to be as normal as possible. Yes. With what we had. Right. And that is it's big when you think about the sacrifices that you make, you know, because, yes, kids don't ask to be in the world. Yeah. <laughs> they come into the world and then they go through all these things. But I've seen so many mothers who feel like I'm grown. I do what I, you know, I'm do what I want to do. But, the, you know, yeah, I'm going to make a decision. It's my life. But your life affects the lives of those children. Exactly. And like you said, what they see is normal. What they see is okay. How they move depends on how they were brought up. Right. Yeah, there are things that God will do in a person's life to like, you know, have them on a course, but at the same time, that environment plays a big, big role. It definitely does. And they're going to they're going to see it and they're going to absorb it whether it's good or bad. Mhm. Mm Mm -hmm. My kids are grown in their 30s and 40s, mm -hmm. and they still make comments. I got that from you, mama. Mm -hmm. I saw you do this, mama. Mm -hmm. And whether I had set before them a good example mm -hmm. or a bad example, mm -hmm. that's going to affect them right. even today. Right. Because a lot of times they mirror it. Yeah. Without even knowing. Yes. It, it becomes a part of who they are. Exactly. So are there any, like I said, they're, they're grown and are there any things that you, that took place kind of in that area? I know we're going to get to the new Be Thou Sweetie, <laughs> but is there anything in between there that, that happened that stands out at this time that you want to share? Um, I think the biggest time, biggest part between in that time period was just the being there for them. And I, I, I don't see anything that really stands out, stands out. Like you said, I had one in college that I had to make some sacrifices for. Mm -hmm. I remember during that time period um, when he went to school, he they had no more dorm rooms on campus. Mm -hmm. So they had to get he had to get an apartment off campus. Mm -hmm. So during that time, I had to pay for his part of the apartment. Mm -hmm. So I had not long gotten a, a car. And so it got to the point I couldn't afford to pay for the car okay. and pay his portion of the rent. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a choice. Okay. And I made the choice to let the car go back. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that stood mm -hmm. out. Like you talk about, you know, parents sometimes say, well, this is my life. Mm -hmm. And but. That's another yes. thing, you know, choices that we have to make sometimes that don't work in our favor. Right. Because now I got to figure out it because I still got to go to work. Right. You know, and that was right that during that time, my main transportation, mm -hmm. you know, so that left me having to figure, you know, figure that out. OK. So okay. and then at that time, you know, I had two still in high school, mm -hmm. one playing football, one cheerleader. Mm -hmm. A lot of money that goes into those when right. they're involved in those type of activities. Right. And then, so, but you were living over here and they were schooling over there. They were. So then that's another transportation. Thing. That's another. Fortunately, my oldest was driving. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but then that's, I got to put gas in his car mm -hmm. and my car, mm -hmm. you know. But one but thing when about. when went to college. Well, yeah. Didn't think about that. So the other two, by then, mm -hmm. they began you know, to drive and stuff okay. like that. One good thing about my kids, they always wanted to work early. That's they it. they always wanted to work. They teased me about, I'm, I was the kind of parent that, you know, kids today be wanting these 
different kinds of shoes mm -hmm. and they'd be like Vivian would be like chat please <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so certain things that they wanted above what I was willing to you know give mm -hmm. to them they they just started working and, and okay. you know buying the, the other things that they wanted okay. you well, know nice. so and that helped a lot mm -hmm. that helped mm -hmm. out a lot and I just want to ask you because I know your kids and they, as much as they have some ways of life, they're very different. They are. Their demeanor, how they, how they do things, everything is different. How did you, how were you able to maneuver and allow each of them to be, you know, their authentic self and deal with how they were from the core, like without trying to, without comparing or without, crushing or how, right. how did that work right and, and um that's a great question because one thing and i just i i attribute it to the lord that he showed me early on that how individualized they were my oldest son and he'll tell you to this day i used to tell him carlos you can't do what everybody else mm -hmm. can do and get away with it mm -hmm. you got a calling on your life mm -hmm. so and I always put more pressure on him because he was the oldest. Mm -hmm. I said, you have two siblings that's looking up to you. Right. So he was handled one way. Mm -hmm. Then my other son, everybody calls him Ron. I call him Brian. Oh, me too. <laughs> um, he was handled a, a different way. I was able to somehow identify who they were early on. And um, and then, you know, of course, my daughter, Brittany. Right. Um, and so I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. I'm so, so thankful. And, and I know that was just the Lord. OK, that's okay. all that was him revealing to me and the teaching that I was getting, right. you know, at New Beginning. Right. What our pastor would would teach us about how and, and watching him raise his children mm -hmm. and and him teaching us a, how, about how. God handles us yes. as being his children yes. and how we handle our physical children. Right. So that my kids don't even know that gave them a lot of grace <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> right. But um, right. that helped as well. OK, because I know it can it can be difficult when you have different personalities in the same house and trying to figure out what's. Cause, cause kids are, that's not fair, but what does fair look like? Yes. And, and how do you handle and maneuver them? And it's yes for one and no for the other way. You didn't let me do that. Yes. But you just have to, you have to know. And then I guess too, with them being in the same church Yeah. and as they got older hearing yeah. the same thing, they could kind of understand too. Yeah. And I don't get me wrong. We had a lot of, well, this is your favorite and you treat him. We had that. So I used to always tell them my favorite is who needs me at the time. OK, OK. That's who my favorite is. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> but, yeah, they had a lot of that bickering mm -hmm. back and forth right. about who the favorite. And they still say it to this I, I day. Bet. I <laughs> bet. Yes. So now tell me this. When did you date off and on during that time? Were you dating or were you like, forget it or what? Yeah, thankfully, and, and I'm going to be honest, I think I stayed in the first situation so long because I used to say, I don't want to go back out mm -hmm. into that dating field. Mm -hmm. I, it just scared me to think about it. I saw what other single people right. and heard stories about mm -hmm. things they were going through mm -hmm. and everything like that. But when I was forced to, to go there, I didn't do a lot. Mm -hmm. a dating at all mm -hmm. you know and my current husband it was a happenstance that we met okay so, so how did that happen um <clears throat> my sister a co-worker of my sister's daughter was getting married a co-worker of, of my sister's, sister's daughter my sister's co-worker's daughter okay, maybe okay, i said okay. that wrong okay was getting married mm -hmm. and she wanted me to go to the wedding and reception with her mm -hmm. really didn't want to go mm -hmm. and so finally her and her daughter and and one of our first cousins was going mm -hmm. so i said okay i'll go right. and um so we went to it, the wedding and the reception was being held in the same place mm -hmm. but they, it was an extremely long okay program wedding okay. 
So we all had not had any dinner and was getting very, very hungry. We decided mm -hmm. to kind of sneak out once the reception started okay. and went over to Applebee's. Okay. And so we were sitting at the table at Applebee's and there was, I wasn't paying any attention to mm -hmm. some gentleman sitting at mm -hmm. a different table mm -hmm. in which my niece struck up a conversation okay. with the gentleman at the other table. Mm -hmm. So... And my husband probably would tell you that <laughs> we we met by he and I not really agreeing on subjects. So okay. uh, he he was saying I was being a smart aleck, but um, <laughs> minding his business, he uh -huh. thought, because mm -hmm. he was having a conversation with my niece. Okay. And so later on, he tells the same story that he didn't really want to go come. Okay. So we just happened to meet mm -hmm. that night at Applebee's. Okay, okay. So did were you afraid? Because how many years had it been since you had been divorced? Oh Lord, um, that's a good question. I can't. Even, I don't, let's see. I probably about eight. Five, eight. I'm not exactly sure how long it had been. It had to be longer. Than it was a it. long time. It had to be longer than that, and we can chop and edit. Yeah, but um, it was a long time. I because how old, let's say how old was Brittany when you divorced? She, because they were in high school, weren't they? Yeah, or, or middle yeah. or something. Yeah, you asking me some questions. You know that <laughs> I really hadn't thought about the length of time or what oh. year it was. It was a it was a long period of time. It was a long period yeah. of time. And I tell people, honestly, um, I didn't want to date. I didn't want to marry because I had had the experience with a blended family. Okay. And it was not a good experience. Gotcha. So I always said. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you've been blessed by today's show, feel free to let us know. And if you'd like to sow into this ministry, become a sponsor or contact us. You can reach us at 803-221-0169 or you can email us at the SSBB show at gmail.com. Let's continue this journey together. We need and would love to have you as a sponsor. Absolutely no gift is too small. Please note the info regarding giving and help us spread these testimonies around the world.